The 2017-2018 Vex game is called In the Zone. It's composed of two robots that are going to be blue and two robots that are going to be red. And their goal is to score as many of these yellow cones on either a stationary goal or on top of these four mobile goals that are their color and then get them back to their regular zone. The, this game is a little bit more difficult than the last couple years. So like two years ago we played a game where it was just pretty much making baskets and the most baskets won. Last year was a little bit more like volleyball. And so this one's a little bit more of a traditional robotics game where we're going to have to think about all different components, how they interact and put a lot more strategy into it. And so we're going to just try to break down that process to make it to where more teams can be competitive earlier on. So when I look at the way points are scored in this game, if I'm the blue team, right, I'm going to try to make it to where I can definitely win the autonomous. And so I'm going to set up my robots to where they can score on this close goal or a couple of these mobile goals in the right location so I can get those 10 points because that's really a 20 point swing. So if they get it, I'm, I'm 10 points behind them, whereas if I get it, I'm 10 points ahead. That's been pretty pivotal the last couple of years with Vex Robotics, and I think that uh, I like that they kept that strategy. I think that's going to be really, really positive for kids because they get out and program a lot. The next couple areas I think are very important are is making sure that your mobile goals get into your zones. So the 20 point zone, this back one, you can only put one in, but it's a must. That's a little bit larger like PVC pipe that you have to get over, but you have to get one over there. So your design has to be accommodate, accommodate getting that over there. The next thing would be looking at these 10 point score zones. And so there's a smaller PVC that you have to go over, but it, if you get over and you can put all three of your other mobile, mobile goals in there, it almost negates putting anything in the five point zone. Because when you look at the five point zone, you get bonus points for the highest stack. And so I think the normal thought would be, well, I'm gonna to try to get the highest stack in 20 point, highest stack in 10 point, highest stack in five point. But if I get in the 10 point, I get the bonus for the highest stack already. So I'm getting 10 points. And so it's just better to put it back there initially anyway, because I no longer have to rely on what red does in any capacity. The, the other thing to think about is that you, you're going to have to score cones wherever. And so trying to get it to where it's as high as possible is great. And so that's just going to be part of the actual way that you design the game. The other thing is that if I'm sitting there at the end of time, is that if I'm holding a cone, so let's say I have this cone, I'm in between my, my mobile goals over here and this blue tile. It is much more valuable for me to pull up this cone and try to score it than it is for me to park. The reason is that either way I'm going to get two points, right? But if I go over here and I score and it lifts me above what red has done, I now have the ability uh, to also get these five points for the highest net score zone. And so that's a real positive. So when we look at autonomous, there's going to be a couple things that I think are going to be very common for teams this year. One of them is going to be called, um, in my mind, just sequencing. So in other words, I'm going to go up, I'm going to score, come back, and then you're going to score. And what that gives us is it gives us two cones up at the top, which I think probably for the first couple months of the season is going to be almost assured win for uh, the autonomous time. Um, I think when we get a little bit further on, you're going to see teams get a little bit more advanced. So I feel that you'll have... Um, teams go up, score here, and then I think this top team will actually go and try to get this cone and try to score also. The, the scoring on the mobile goal is a little bit more complex, so let's say I go in, I score, and then I come back, and I rotate. Right? When I go down, I have to make sure that my path doesn't get shut off by this cone right here. And so I've almost got to condition my robot to be a little bit off the wall and then come in and score. There, there's ways to do that and there's cool programming ways to do that and so I'd, I'd look at that. The, the other thing to note with the autonomous period is I think there's almost no value in starting from this position. And so if I start from this position and I score with my preload and I come back, I'm, I'm not any closer as if I started here and I'm not in a good like turning location. So I've got to turn like 30 degrees here, go a little bit, turn back a little bit, and then I can score again, approach those. 
And so I really think that what you'll see a lot of teams do is come up from the side, go back, and then when they hit a point, turn directly there and go down. So that's the Thomas in a nutshell. Um, the, like the actual driver control is going to be a little bit more complex. And so I really think this year what I love is that you're going to really have to work with your partner. In other words, there's only so many goals, <laughs> right? And so the it's going to be really awkward for a team to try to score all four, or if they both go for the, like these, this guy and this guy both go for that one, or this gal and this gal both go for that one. There's no real value to it. And so you're going to have to set up some type of strategy there. The the main thing with the that thought is how do I get all four mobile goals and the cones that are within its proximity into the space? And so whenever I pick up this one, I'm going to want to score these five around it. Whenever I pick up this one, I'm going to want to score these five around it. You want to spread out the scoring. So in other words, like it, th there's not a lot of value. So if I'm going after the the 20 point and the 10 point, there's not a lot of value in, in having two stacks of 20 in the 10 point zone rather than uh, one stack, of one really, really tall stack. And so you can spread them out, but I think whatever's easiest after a little while is a big deal. Um, there's a couple cones that are really contested. And so if I'm coming out, like let's say this is my robot. If I'm going down, I've scored and I've finished my autonomous right here. I really don't want to start here because these are sort of close to my zone. I think what, what we're going to see is that it's going to be much more beneficial for one of the two robots to go into like the contested zone area, right? Because these are both closer to them. And if I'm the blue team, the red team is going to try to score these two onto that one. So if I can go and take those away from them and score here, that's a big value to me. So I would go after that. And I try to figure out how best to manage my driver loads. So if I'm going after the, the 20 and I want to make that very precise and accurate off the bat, I know I can do that very quickly by using my driver loads. I can also hold those off until later, which I think you're going to see a lot more often later in the season is that people are going to hold off on their driver loads. Because while I'm over here scoring these, I'm not taking any of these away from my opponent. Whereas my opponent can't come and take my driver loads. And so I think you're going to see a lot of strategy involving that in the map. So here's my initial strategy. What I would do is I'm going to have in my autonomous, I'm going to have, let's say this is bot one. I'm going to have them try to score one stationary goal and another one on stationary goal, giving me two. I, I think that going down through this and trying to do it autonomously is going to be really tough because there's going to be just a lot of obstruction and these can be an inch one way or the other. Like you've got those tolerance on the field that you have to deal with. The, the second is going to try to score on the mobile goal. So I feel that it would be great if we can make it score and then go there. I think what's going to happen though is that it's going to be probably better just to have a better line to start with uh, initially. And so we're going to score on the mobile zone on the driver load and score a second cone. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to try to score my preload there. I'll probably just push these out of the way and hope I get in the right spot. Back up to where a line follower can see my line, grab it, and then try to score a second. If I can, if my team can do that, we're going to be in really good shape to win whatever autonomous is that we want. And so that's going to be about 10 points. But if I don't have like a partner that I typically work with, I'm going to be programmed to do both of those because some teams are going to focus on this and some teams are going to focus on that. And so being able to spread that out is going to be a good thing. So the driver control period is where it gets a little bit more complex. And so if I'm bot one and I'm here, I'm probably going to sit there. I'm going to score and I might end right there. My first thought is going to be uh, to maybe consider over there like and go to the ones that are sort of designated more blue in my mind. But I think the better bet would be to go in and start going after my blue mobile goals right here and try to score these 10 on them. The reason is that they're very close to to that goal. So being able to pull those away, I think is going to be real positive. Uh, and I can always come back and use those first. Uh, so I would go after these initially with that one bot and try to get over what my max is and just put over there to be scored in the 10 point zone later on. 
My second bot, the one that came down here and scored on this goal, I'm going to use it to score as many of these as I can, if that's my strategy, on my 20 points. So I'm going to have one person, one team that is designed just to score that 20. So I've got to lift that up over that bar and place it in. But I've got to know how many I can push into that location. And so doing that early, I think, is real positive. But it's, it's a mandatory thing. You've got to be able to do it. In, in the last 30 seconds, I'm going to look to push the remaining goals into the 10-point zone. So I'm going to sort of, this guy goes and puts that there, and this gal goes around and scores, pushing these around, scoring as many as they possibly can. And they're going to focus on these until the end of time. And so we're going to try to get them both in at the last 30 seconds. So my strategy really is going to be in a competitive match is I'm going to wait until my opponent scores a 20-point zone uh, to score my alliances. In other words, it's going to be really easy to add additional cones if it's in the 10-point zone, a little harder in the 20-point zone. And so if I know they've already scored in the 20-point zone, I can count those and I can make sure I beat them. And that I'm not losing a terrible amount of time there by doing that. The other thing is I'm going to hold off until my drop goes to the end of the period unless my whole strategy involves 20 points it's just later in the season that's going after these earlier and these earlier is going to be a little bit more valuable the other thing is I'm going to focus on scoring goals that are not against the wall so if this is my robot for me to score against the wall I've got to come in and grab this which is going to be more complex and then come out back and score whereas in this environment I can come in pick that up and score come in pick that up and score it's just going to be a little bit faster to score away from the wall. And so I'm going to focus on those and sort of let my opponent try to fight those in my mind. So that's my initial thought. I really like the game. I think there's a lot going on to it. I think that there's uh, some funness with the um, with the component that we're working with, that cone I think is really kind of cool, and the different strategies I think are going to be really interesting for teams. So good luck. I hope this helped as far as planning out your design. And uh, have a good season.